Hello everybody, it's Tim again. Uh, right now I'm working on a TS820S and I'll take off the uh, tripod in a minute and let you look at it from the front. I would have started from the very front but I didn't know what I had here until I started to look at it. The complaint is not very good audio coming out, uh, you know, when it transmits the sideband. If you have it turned up all the way and you talk loud, everybody seems to be pleased with it. But it's not very sensitive if you turn it down to about halfway and you about scream into it, you're not even getting full power. So a couple of things I found, uh, actually I was looking on the internet and I found that there's uh, two transistors that they say are questionable. So I was not really completely sure how dead it was. So anyhow. We'll get to that in a minute. I'll uh, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm measuring here. But first, I'll pop it off and I'll show you it from the front, so you can get a look. It's uh, it's in pretty nice shape for as old as it is. I'll probably turn it around to us a little bit. And after we put it back together, we'll uh, get a better look at it. Well, let's see. Oh no, it's uh, it's pretty clean. But where I'll actually be working is right here, and I'll. Be showing it on the schematic as well. Uh, this transistor right here, that transistor right there, and then there's another one, 19, which I can't see it right now through this, but that one I can test very easily. Uh, and if you look where the lead is, they gave me a nice test point that I can see where the final output is for the, from the audio. So. I'll show you here what I'm thinking. Get up and look at the screen if I can. Get this to zoom so that it looks okay. There we go. Now let me get what I'm actually looking for here. I'm going to go back to the tripod because it's going to be too shaky with me trying to do this. Let me pause it here for a second. Okay, we're back. So, here's here's what I'm thinking. Right here, and I'll, I'll use the cursor, but for now I'll point. Right here where it says mic is where the signal comes in from the microphone. Pin one of the microphone jack. It goes right in through here, and we'll follow this heavy black lead, and it goes down. So now we know it's the lower of the two. It's going down. Now here it's the upper of the two, so now we can speed up a little bit and see where it goes to. So it comes in, do 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 do, goes all the way down, keeps going, keeps going, and here's where it goes into an amplifier, Q19. There's a transistor there, so it goes into that, and it's in through the base, and then comes back out through the collector, up, and now it's going back down. We're going to follow it back again. Seems a little bit like a convoluted way of doing things. Now come up here and we're going to stay with the solid line. Now it's the upper one this time. And we're going to follow it and there it goes to MV1. So curious to see where MV1 comes and goes. So right here, MV1, if you follow this right here, comes in and it goes to the switch on the front that controls the modulation level comes into there and goes back out as MV2. Now you might ask where does MV2 go? Where does that all play into this? MV2 right here back on the same board and it's going to go down so now we're going to follow this heavy the heavy line that's they use the heavy line to indicate the signal line and we're going, we're going, aha. Uh -huh. So here's where it comes up. 
and it feeds into Q20, and then the output of 20 feeds into 21, and then the output of 21 will go around, and here's our test point two. So that's basically the output that we're at. So I just was showing you that so you know where I'm going with all this. So now, I'm going to point you at the sky, I guess. Okay, now I'm going to point you at the oscilloscope, and the two traces are as follows. The uh, purple trace is going right to the input. I'm going to be able to swing you around to show you where that's actually going. See the purple line, and you can see where the uh, the cap is the purple ring around it from channel 2. And that goes in... Two, you can see a little the uh, four pin jack and if you follow that down you'll see that okay, I'm at the end of my travel there on the scope you'll see a couple of these there two were from the signal generator and I'll show you that and two were from the scope the uh, signal in the ground and then the yellow one is the other channel, and that's right here, and that's where I showed you earlier, that's on test point two. But we're going to make one other test point look, or check, before we do anything. There's the uh, signal generator. I'm putting 1,000, or 1 kilohertz, rather, at uh, 5 millivolt RMS. And I saw that that was one of the testing standards that they used for this radio, so I knew it wouldn't be overpowering it. So back to here, you can see the purple and it, uh, it looks a little bit fuzzy and the reason is it's set at uh, 20 millivolt scale to see that, whereas the yellow is at the 1 volt scale. And I'll show you how I'm going to just turn the uh, modulation knob up and down and you can see the yellow goes away purple kind of stays the same and the only reason it's moving now is because I'm triggering off channel one which is the yellow so I'll turn it back up that is all I get and I guess that's not really that bad considering it's uh, looks like it's 1.2 volts is that's what I'm gonna get the test point so anyhow I'll show you how I got to where I'm at So, again, like I said, we're looking at uh, the purple being, being the input. So anything that's greater than, in, than the input is going to be good for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and touch on the base of Q20. And what I'm going to have to do is Give me a little bit more gain on this. Oops, wrong way, Tim. Okay, and you can see I'm on the base, which is the input of the of Q20, and it's the output of Q19. The two transistors I showed you. And I'm adjusting the volume. Not the volume. I'm adjusting the gain for the uh, modulation, and it seems to be working fine. Uh, let me put these both on the same scale. Now they're both on the 20 millivolt scale, and you can see I've definitely showed an increase. So I know that the transistor before Q20 seems to be working. That's the first, that's the Q19, the one I showed you. Because I'm showing definite gain over the input. So now we'll look at the output of Q20. And when I get up here and look at the output of Q20, I'm showing some gain. Let's see if I lose it all. Oops, hang on a minute. I think I was actually on the test point instead, but. Uh, 
Let's see. Come on, computer. There we go. So we're showing still gain coming to that. So now I'll look at the output of that and see what that looks like. So what are we looking at? I'm looking at approximately 117 millivolts output on there. So now we go to the output here and it's substantial. So that looks good. Okay, so I'm back here and what I'm seeing is all kind of gain at that one channel. But yet I don't see that same kind of gain when I look at the input. That was the input. I'm sorry, that's that's the I'll show you the input of the second transistor. Whoop, there's my ground. Here's the input of the second transistor, and here's the output. Substantial gain. Now even though the first transistor, here's the input. Hang on, I'll get it there. Here's the input, and here's the output. It's almost the same. Uh, it, it seems to clean the signal up a little bit, but other than that, I'm not getting any gain. And there's the same transistor number, so the assumption is that this first transistor, there's the input, that's the base, there's the collector. So it, it's actually slightly less. Uh, so, I'll show you again where I was testing on the uh, actual, uh, slow enough so that it stays focused. I have to drop the tripod a little bit so that I can get closer to it. So sorry for all the movement, the jumping around. But anyhow, so here's where, where I was testing the input to this transistor right here and then the output was actually just the base of the next transistor so it's a little bit tough to get in there so what I'll do is I'll just check for voltage on the base so I'm going to look up here back at the schematic and these are pretty good they give you they give you a good amount of uh, information here. Um, can't quite make out what that says. Just not a good good drawing. So that's C19 which or Q19 rather which is at first and I know this one's working. Remember because I'm seeing my input is what I've shown on the purple lead and the output when I put it here I saw the substantial gain uh, and then here it's like 0.9 volts maybe for the uh, for the base so let's go back we're going to turn the signal generator off and turn channel 2 off and for channel one, I'm going to make it DC coupling. Oh. I'm going to make it DC coupling. I'll show you what I'm doing here on the scope, so you can work with me on this. I'll put it about at a half a volt. Well, it'll take some of the noise out. We'll go to DC coupling. 
we're good with that. So now when I come over here and put my lead on the base, I should see I'm thinking maybe it'll bounce up close to two of the little squares, so maybe up to here. Let's see. to get in there on that. Okay, probably easier to show it on the digital voltmeter. Every time I go to look at the scope, I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. So I have it set on volts DC and it should measure up to two volts on that scale. So when I go to the base of Q20, there it was saying about 0.9, that's about one, so that's pretty good. So the other leads I can't get to, they're just too, they're too tight in there. And then Q21 should have on the base of that about 2 volts, so that's about close enough for me. So, the hypothesis I have here is that Q20 is kaput. So, I have to see about getting a new Q20 and then get that soldered in and take a look at everything, and uh, I can test it better when I get it out. But, uh, once I tear the board out, I'll see. I might be able to get in there and, and test the uh, the voltages on the collector and emitter. But uh, the other thing I was going to show you was. Hang on, let me just. Gotta love the internet. So the uh, quality on this isn't that good, and who knows how it looks coming through the camera. But the first thing I see there is. It says mushy audio on transmit, mic amps Q20 and 21 on IF board, and that's the uh, 481150 is the board number, are bad. So it looks to me like at least 20 is bad. So while I'm in there, I'll replace 20 and 21 together. And uh, I looked it up, and there's an NTE part that uh, is a suitable replacement so when I when it gets here I'll show you it and if it works and it works well then you can use that as uh, if you ever have to work on one of these so that's it for now just wanted to show you what I was working on and um, we'll get back to it take a look to see what's not turned on there and uh, I'll get back to it once I have everything done or when I go to maybe put the transistor in we'll uh, see what's, what's all involved with taking that IF board out. Thanks for watching.